Welcome into the DNVR Rockies podcast brought to you by DraftKings Sportsbook. Now, when you use promo code DNVR, new customers, all you got to do is make a $5 pregame NBA money line bet. And when that team wins, you get $150 in free bets with code DNVR only on DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of the NBA. I am Patrick Lyons. And I am still in oppressive humidity, but you could also call me Susie Hunter. Patrick, how you doing? <laughs> We are doing very well. We are doing very well. We've uh, we're gonna do a little wish casting here, where we will try to figure out exactly which free agents the Rockies uh, should possibly be targeting. There, there are still free agents out there, believe it or not. They, I believe it. I believe it. Um, uh, but yeah, the Rockies could. They could. They could. W- but will they? But will they? Yes. Uh, we'll talk Pete Rose. Uh, some more free agents oh uh, have signed, and the the latest uh, style craze: gigantic hats. You know about this? Is this real? <laughs> okay. Well, we'll dive into it. We've uh, we've got we've got plenty of time. Uh, there was a signing over the break uh, that we haven't discussed. Uh, interesting one. It's a minor league deal. Matt Carasidi comes back to the Rockies uh, was a guy. Oh uh, my gosh. Yes. Do you yes. know that name? You know that. Oh, name. Okay. So I know that name very well because Matt Carasidi was like the first really disappointing piece of that yard goats 2016 season, <laughs> aka the road goats because Matt Carasidi is from right outside of Hartford. He's from New Britain, Connecticut. Like he is like he was going to be the local dude who played for the yard goats and like he was excited that his family was going to get to see him super close to home. So like that first hot stove luncheon that the yard goats had, like he was the guy that everyone was talking to. And then of course we never saw him play in Connecticut. So, and then he wasn't in the organization for much longer after that. So when I think of Matt Carasini, I think like, Oh, that was like the yard goats 2016 season had so much potential to be really cool for Hartford. And it ended up being quite the opposite of that. He never played for the yard goats. No, he was a yard goat, but oh. he was a road goat. Oh, that's right. We we he never saw him in, in Hartford. Exactly. Yes. The, exactly. So yeah. The, yes. The Hartford yard goats in 2016 never played in Hartford. Um, and that was a, it was a huge bummer because he was, he was the local guy. That was like the, you know, when the press people put together a little press packet, they're like, this is the guy you got to talk yeah. to. When you started off by saying disappointment, I was like, uh, I mean, no, I mean, he's had a nice career. And then in hearing no, no, your nothing full thought, that he did, nothing that he did, <laughs> it was just like his presence got our hopes up for something really yeah. cool. And then it ended up being not, not so cool, but yeah. nothing that he did. Yeah. He, he, uh, he did pitch in 19 games with the Rockies in 2016, was traded for Zach Roscup, who has a long legacy of being on the Rockies and being in Albuquerque and being hurt, mm-hmm. uh, pitched 11 games with the Mariners in 2019. It's pretty much just been a triple a guy. The rest of his career uh, was with San Francisco last year in the minors. So he went to school at St. John's university, the same school as Gavin Hollowell, as you mentioned, born in mm-hmm. Connecticut. So he's 2016 yard goat. Also he and I share a birthday. No way. So this guy's kind of perfect, right? He's got the car, the, the Connecticut background. He was in Hartford for the first year. So he ticks off all those boxes for you. Mm-hmm. We share the same birthday. That's this, amazing. He's that's our cool. dude. He is that's our dude. dude. I'm excited that he has made his way back to the Rockies organization. Yeah. And, and was one of the first Hartford Yard Goat All-Stars. He was the uh, midseason All-Star that year uh, mm-hmm. in the Eastern League in, in 2016. So I think that's a that's a really good minor league signing. Uh, Rockies probably need to, a couple more of those. And and we'll get to that in a second. But thought that was an important guy to uh, to bring back. And I'm, I'm glad you immediately knew. Like, you remember that first. I remember. Guy. How many guys do you think you could name from the 2016 Yard Goat? <gasps> this is not a Pop Seuss. Don't worry. But I'm just oh. curious. We'll take you at your word. I okay, so um, Tapia was a 2016 yard goat. You don't uh, have to. I'm just curious of what the oh oh was. I'm just gonna, I'm, gonna <laughs> do my best. I'm like okay, so Tapia, Marquez, Kyle Freeland, of course, um, Rymac at one point. Um, ooh yeah, I mean like honestly like so David Dahl, David Dahl was around. I think that was was he around or was he injured? <laughs> I think no, he, he was around. Yeah, to, uh, he uh, yeah he played in uh, seventy six games. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I'm like, okay. When did he? When did his spleen explode? That's what uh, happened. That, right? that was before that. Yeah. Yeah. That I was think before that. that, that was, right. That was April. 
right. It's right. kind of hard to remember because it's like, oh, never actually saw these guys with my own eyes playing in Hartford. And then they yeah. were they'd moved up. There's some interesting names on the list that uh, never debuted with the Rockies. Like they like Connor Wade uh, was a guy. Connor who, Wade. Yeah. Orioles. I think he did end up uh, debuting with the Orioles and never with the Rockies. Mm-hmm. Um, but but he's a guy. He's one of those big leaguers from that team. So, all right, that, that's, that's a pretty good list. That's a pretty good, you, you got a lot on there. Do you remember any, uh, and it's also rare in double a to, uh, to have a rehab assignment, but I'm, I'm looking on the, I'm looking on the, you know, games there played. Some, there was there one. Been some, there've been some interesting ones. Chris Iannetta did a rehab assignment in Hartford, not in 2016, but like, yeah, did a rehab assignment. Um, Chad Bettis, his first rehab assignment after, um, his cancer battle. He he pitched, but like the funny thing was, uh, he didn't have the pants to match the jersey, um, so he was wearing purple pinstripe pants with a yard goats jersey. It was hysterical. Nice precursor to the city connects, like uh, an yeah. alternate city connect. I like yeah. that. And yeah, then the Har- Yankees and the Yankees and Red Sox will send a lot of guys on rehab assignments for their teams to Hartford because the facilities are so nice and it's so close to both of those cities. That makes sense, and that that's why it's kind of curious. Is like you'd probably be surprised to know that like a lot of those players uh, or rather a lot of teams have players rehab at double AA, a triple a facilities, sometimes even low a. Cause again, it's just, you're just rehabbing. You're just playing the game, doing mm-hmm. athletic things and you want to do it close to home. I mean, Albuquerque is the closest that, that the Rockies have. So they don't really send too many for Hartford. So when they do, it's kind of a big deal. Tyler Chatwood, uh, Gerardo Parra, those guys uh, back in, in 2016. So mm-hmm. uh, that's kind of special when, when you can do that, but you're right. It's, it's more rare for the Rockies than, for those other teams in the AL and NL East. Yeah. Like it makes sense if they're about to play on the East coast and they just want to have them close by. That's like the only time you really ever see a Rocky rehabbing with the yard goats. It's super rare, but when it happens, oof, what cool. an event. <laughs> I do remember that happening once in the last maybe three years. Maybe it was Ionetta. Maybe Ionetta. Ionetta. Like yeah. Maybe. He was there. Okay, so Ionetta's rehab assignment was it was a bark in the park night. So like he was like out there <laughs> Like out in the, you know, he was in the outfield just like, you know, having a catch. And like all these people with their dogs are walking around. And I'm like, I actually am not sure that people recognize Chris Ionetta right now. But um, you know, on scoreboards, the, uh, you know, they'll put fun facts up there. His fun his fun fact was is a major league baseball player. It was just like really funny. <laughs> Look, the, the crack staff, the communications department at, at uh, for the Hartford Yard Goats, they do their homework. That is true. Uh, the it's last true. Minute. It's true. Uh, but yeah, he's he's a Rhode Island native. So like that made a lot of That's sense cool. for him to, you know, pop over an hour and a half away to Hartford. I thought you were going to say they they would change the players names to something dog related. And immediately the brain started processing. I go, oh, my gosh, you could do Chris. I am's Netta, you know, for the no, the that would have to be a sponsored. That would have to be sponsored. <laughs> would, definitely. Definitely would have to be. Also, we've never said this on the show. Congratulations, Chris Ionetta and Alana Rizzo. Married. Yes, congratulations. They are married now. They posted that, I guess, was it before Christmas? I think so. Yeah. All, the, all of the days from like right before Christmas up until now are just kind of like one big mash of days. So I'm like, was that like yesterday or was that like two weeks ago? Was but that yes, congratulations. <laughs> yeah. Congratulations to the Ionettas. That's awesome. I'm, I'm sure they celebrated with some bottles of uh, from Jack Winery. That's mm-hmm. it. Which I don't know that you can get that in stores. I think we've we've discussed this maybe off air. I think you can only get it from their website if you're if you're interested in in supporting uh, Chris Ionetta's wine business, uh, along with Vernon Wells, also uh, one of the co-owners uh, of that. So uh, right. congrats, con- congrats to them. Congrats to mm-hmm. all the wine drinkers uh, all around the world. No <laughs> no segue in, in into talking uh, about the bar, but uh, Caracidi. Welcome. Welcome back. Like that's, that's neat. Welcome back. Yeah. I'm excited to see him again. I'm like, okay, this is a dude that I met like at the uh, hot stove luncheon in in 2016. So I'm like, oh wow. Like this is okay. At this point, this is like eight years ago, nine years ago, eight, seven. (laughs) Don't make me do math. Seven. Yeah. Seven. I'm like, I'm like, wait, no, this is, this is getting bad. Just throw the word nearly in front of whatever your estimation is, and you're good. Like nearly a decade ago. I mean, that's true. Seven years is nearly a decade ago. So um sort of. Sort of. <laughs> Look, it's it's but if you try to nail the exact number and you're wrong, you're gonna be wrong. If you say nearly a decade, you I'll can never get away. be wrong. If I just say nearly, 
That's right. Exactly. I'll, I'll never yes. Never be wrong. I also I can remember in, in high school dropping the word several for the first time, and then immediately learning it doesn't mean exactly seven. Like I thought it meant like you know how you say a couple is two, a few is three or more, and I'm like several is seven. <laughs> you were convinced that several was seven. Come on, that's not that's not foolish. For you, I was. That's it's a little foolish, Patrick. I'm I was a senior in high school. I was a senior in high school, but I was only 17. I was an 18 year old senior. So give me a break. I feel like that's a word that you learn when you're 18 more so than 17. So just like you, I'm still right. I'm going to get myself a pass on that. Okay. Uh, before we get into some of the names maybe that are out there in free agency for mm -hmm. you, Susie, where, where do you feel like the, the roster right now is, is lacking or where's like the top priority? Is it, Hey, another left-handed bat for the outfield. Maybe another starting pitcher, the bullpen. What what for you do you feel like this roster probably could benefit the most from adding? I am putting starting pitching at the very top of that list. I think that is, I think that has to be the Rockies' absolute number one priority. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think they have some depth, but not enough depth, uh, especially if you're counting on Lambert and Rawlson, who I I am. I my prediction is that Ralston's going to the bullpen. I think he's mm -hmm. going to be a left-handed guy. He'll he'll be great there with with Suter and Lucas Gilbreth. So could actually have three left-handed relievers in the Rockies bullpen, which is uh, crazy, uh, an embarrassment of riches, uh, if you will. So you need more of those guys, and maybe you just want a little bit more insurance if you're not convinced that Ryan Feltner. Uh, mm -hmm. you know, deserves to go out there or, or is capable of going out there 30 to 32 times. Same thing with Austin Gomber. Again, you can project those kind of things, but you might want to, you know, guard against that uh, with, with Freeland Marquez as your one and two, Jose Urania, just for his veteran status is your number mm -hmm. three. And then after that, there's some question marks. So uh, I, I do, I do think that another starting pitcher would definitely benefit the roster this season. Yeah, I, I absolutely agree. We, we need it. We need to see it. Yeah. And, and we're going to, we're going to see that starting pitching because on Monday we talked about it with uh, Spencer Smith. We're going to try to do some tailgates. We're going to try to do some fun things uh, yes. for our diehards uh, at the dnvr.com where uh, your annual membership gets you a free shirt each and every year, 15% off your entire tab at the DNVR bar food, Such a good deal. alcohol, buying drinks for people in black vest, Ezekiel Tovar jerseys like Susie does. <laughs> All the time. I mean, every time someone has worn one of those jerseys into the bar, she has bought them a beer just like I have bought a beer. For everyone that's worn a City Connect jersey with Todd Hollinsworth's name on the back of it, we follow through on our promises. We also promise 20% off all your gear at dnvrlocker.com, 20% off all the tailgates and party buses. So such what a good deal. deal. It is. It's 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 the best deal uh, around, and uh, nobody else can say that. I think there there's some rumors that there are some other uh, local sports businesses in Denver that are trying to possibly get a bar. Uh, they're they like our model. I'll just say that they like what we're doing. I don't know if they're gonna have a bar. Invitation though. is the absolute sincerest form of flattery, and uh, we may or may not be out there being imitated. Absolutely. Yes. But you want the original. We got the original right here. You do. You do. Because, you know, again, again, knowing what uh, people, when they try to imitate and they just miss the mark, or maybe they miss it by a, a lot. Um, again, we sent our guys to Serbia. Are they sending, you know, their crew to like Latvia and for no particular reason? <laughs> like maybe you don't know. Like, again, you get the original. That's us. The DNVR.com. Yes. That's that's all we'll uh, we'll say about that. Chris is very much paying attention. I uh, don't like vowels vowel in my bar names. Yeah, pretty pretty much. Matteo from coming in from Italy. You know what? We might we might have to have a crew coming out from Italy. Chris Ionetta, did he play for the Italian team on WBC? I know he is Italian. He may have. We'll find an excuse, Matteo. Don't worry. We'll we'll hang out one of those uh, one of these days. Italy. Yeah, yeah. For, uh, absolutely. I could do this show from Italy. You know. Uh, I'll have to tell you off air, but there's a frequent guest of our of our show, uh, the DMVR Records podcast, that is right now in Italy. I won't blow up their spot, but there is somebody in Italy right now that we could have a guest from Italy on. Before you, Matteo, sorry. A frequent guest yeah. is in is visiting Italy right now? Visiting Italy. Well, I'll, I'll have to tell you off air. You can think about it. And uh, Well, now I'm, that's the only thing I'm going to think about for the rest of the show is... Who is in Italy right now that we know? Well, you should think because right now you're in Florida, so it's okay. it's 
you're closer to it being five o'clock somewhere. I mean, it's at least in the afternoon for you. So you could get uh, one of the Breck Brew Broncos country, especially because as we know, football season mm -hmm. is coming to a close and there's really nothing that a beer can't fix. Uh, Breck Brew has mm -hmm. got you covered with the hometown craft beer of the Denver Broncos. It's Broncos country pale ale. It's the go-to. It's got that orange crush logo, hundred percent Colorado ingredients. Uh, it's your go-to for at least one last week at home for the Broncos. Got the tailgate coming up on Sunday. Also, I think we uh, we had a price uh, reduction on that too. It's only like thirty five bucks oh for the gosh. for like all you can eat sexy pizza, the Breck Brew, free vibes. I mean, it's a great deal. Okay, that is a really good deal because you really do get like everything included in these tailgates. Yeah, I That's I said I, I said dispense on on Sun on uh, Monday that like you could mm -hmm. show up without tickets. And someone's probably just going to give you tickets or you could use game time tickets. Yeah. Uh, to get that People done. do give away tickets at our tailgates all the time. Like, oh, I can't go or, oh, I have an extra or like, yeah. Or I just came to hang out and I, I don't plan on going in. Here's my ticket. Like this Sunday is, is that game for you to, to do that. <laughs> um, hockey fans will, out there. I, I plan on being at the tailgate this Sunday. Yeah. I'm, I'm moving some things around. I, I think I have an airport trip uh, coming up. So, um, uh, We'll figure that one out. But but hockey's fans, you don't have to figure out where to go to light the lamp this winter. It's DraftKings Sportsbook. Pretty simple. Mm -hmm. An official sports betting partner of the NHL. New customers, all you got to do is bet a $5 pregame money line bet on any NHL game. And when that team wins, it's $150 in free bets if they do. You can also get those same game parlays. Multiple bets gives you even more money. Uh, bigger payout is what it's all about in those same game parlays. So download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now and use promo code DNVR for a $5 pregame NHL money line bet. You also can do this with the NBA games mm -hmm. as well. It's really nice. I think you could also do it with the NFL. I think you could also do it on college football as well. If that team wins for you, even if it is an overwhelming favorite, that's okay. DraftKings looks. <laughs> no, they love those gimmies. Like, look, we're going to give you something. We're going to give you a little bit of momentum, give you that $150 if your team wins. Well, guess what? That's what you get, $150 in free bets when that team wins. That's only at DraftKings Sportsbook and only when you use promo code DNVR. Minimum age and eligibility restrictions apply. See show notes for details. Thank you for saying details. You prefer that Is way that, rather than details? That's, that's actually the correct way to pronounce it if it's, yeah. And then, but not if you're detailing a car. Oh, that's true. Detailing yeah. does not. It's, no, no, no. But it's it's details. Yeah, detail gating, different. not good, dangerous car wise. So, so what day of the week is it right now? Is it Wednesday? Is it? Or is it Wednesday? <laughs> I guess it's Wednesday down here because I'm in Clearwater with all the the Delco people. Wednesday. There, there's Wednesday. the proper pronunciation. Mm -hmm. Um, right, let's start, <laughs> let, let's start with the left-handed hitting outfielders for the Rockies right now. Some of the options, the best ones available, uh, basically get veteran types, David Peralta, mm -hmm. we know, uh, from Arizona, Corey yeah. Dickerson, that would be an interesting little reunion, especially since he was traded for Herman Marquez, uh, mm -hmm. or a guy like Jackie Bradley jr. Who I could see being a good fit and actually getting a substantial amount of playing time in center field. He's the only one of that three. Uh, that can hold down center field still. Uh, I, I kind of would like to see JBJ uh, in, in center field. I, for the I am a big JBJ fan. I would love yeah. to see him as a Rocky. Yeah, I would. I would like that one. That I'd be again. You're getting more defense than offense, uh, which which is fine. Uh, and again, these are all, all going to be short term deals. But those are the veteran presen presences that you could bring in. Um, I don't know that you want to try to you know maybe get somebody younger that you can. You can dream on, you can hope on, takes a step forward because, again, that's going to come at the cost what? of playing time for the younger guys. You know, guys. We, ha we have enough hopes and dreams in the farm system right now. We we don't need any more. Now, I really like Dom Smith as a guy who could do damage uh, at mm -hmm. Coors Field, left-handed hitter. Uh, yeah. He has a better slugging percentage against right-handers, uh, but a better batting average and on base percentage against lefties. So he's got a weird reverse split going on. This was a guy that did finish 13th in the NL MVP voting in 2020. Who was his bench coach with the Mets in 2020? Who? None other than the Rockies current bench coach, Hensley Bam Bam Mullins. So you got to think natural fit. That would be that would have, I would have been, you know, pretty excited uh, if the Rockies were able to get Dom Smith. However, news did break on Tuesday. He signed a one-year deal with the Washington nationals. So well, Sorry we'll, for getting you pumped up. We'll see, yeah, we'll see him opening day. 
We will. That that's right. Home opener, <laughs> April sixth. I want to say a Thursday. It's it's a yeah. It's a Thursday, which is weird because it's supposed to be a Friday. Yeah, it should be. It should, it should be. be. The only I told my neighbors that opening day was on a Thursday, and they like did not believe me. And I'm like, okay, bye. <laughs> like I think on the on the East Coast, sometimes they will schedule opening days for a Thursday, and then a- an off day on Friday because if it snows, rains, whatever, boom, you can just move it to Friday. So mm-hmm. that kind of works out. It's more more reasonable than the the uh, opening day on Friday and then an off day on Saturday, which has happened. And is yeah, I, that's I don't strange. That. Um, I will say, um, so, you know, Philly's opening day, usually on a Thursday, Rocky's opening day, usually on a Friday. There was a season where I had plans to do Philly's opening day on Thursday, catch a flight and then be at Rocky's opening day on a Friday. Do you know what year that was, Patrick? Bank day, bank day, 2020. Correct. (laughs) I had like all these plans. (laughs) Yeah, that's that's about it. Yeah, I can't top that one. I was just excited to go to Minnesota for for a series and check out Target Field. But uh, yeah, that's a bummer. I that love Target Field. Target Field's one of the good ones. I think they're I think they're doing a little bit of renovations there uh, this off season. And I'm not sure if if they go to Minnesota this year. If Minnesota comes to Colorado, but hey, every other year you'll have that op- mm-hmm. we'll have that opportunity to go. So uh, that's exciting. So yeah, uh, we got in our chat, of course. Uh, comment here uh, from Chris about bringing in some veteran guys. So there's still a few more veterans out there. Yeah, you can go the Jerks and Profar route. He's a switch hitter. Mm-hmm. He's probably going to require a two, three-year deal. Uh, Rube Nedodor is a left-handed hitter. He can't play the outfield, but he, he can throw a he can throw a right jab. We know that. Um, <laughs> and you know what? I like that energy. I'm not going to lie. I love a baseball fight. That's true. Uh, he, maybe he plays second base if Brendan Rodgers is traded. We'll see. Uh, if you're if you're just looking for a career backup outfielder, that's going to be super cheap, uh, and maybe even a minor league deal. Maybe mm-hmm. Robbie Grossman or Tyler Naquin. If you need a vibe coordinator, we've got a left-handed outfielder by the name of Brett Phillips. What do you I, think about that one? I know you I like love, that. One. I mean, everyone loves Brett Phillips. I love Brett Phillips. Just like a plus plus personality here. He seems like just the best dude to have around. I would love to have a vibes coordinator in this clubhouse like that. So you'll you'll appreciate this, Susie. In mm-hmm. uh, 2018, I went down to Colorado mm-hmm. Springs, mm-hmm. and uh, I don't I don't think the the Rockies were their affiliate was, was playing at the time. It, w- it wasn't the isotopes. It was, it was mm-hmm. just mother's day. Uh, my, my mom didn't live in Colorado yet. So anyway, went down to the game, uh, mm-hmm. scout some of the brewers guys. There were a bunch of Colorado stories, uh, in the clubhouse. And I said, yeah, while I'm at it, let me talk to Brett Phillips because I had read in the game notes that when he was a kid, uh, growing up in, I think it was Seminole, Florida, but somewhere in Florida, uh, he had this neighbor, this old guy, who loved playing basketball with him like every day. And like, he did not want to lose. He did not let up on Brett Phillips at all. But this old guy would be like, come on, let's, let's go play basketball, Brett. So he played, played, played. Uh, unfortunately, this guy did pass away. Uh, and it wasn't until uh, after he died, and I guess like at the funeral and whatnot, Brett Phil- Phillips realized that his neighbor was Randy Macho Man Savage, a no. wrestler, one of the greatest wrestlers of all time. This guy just wanted to play basketball with a young Brett Phillips. I had to ask him about it. Is that crazy or what? I had to ask him. That's actually really cool. Usually I don't like your wrestling stories, but this is actually a really good story. (laughs) That's so sad though that he didn't, you know, realize it. Yeah. (laughs) It's like so adorable though. Yeah, that's, that's perfect. I mean, look again, when, when you're kind of treated with like a godlike status everywhere you go, it's really refreshing just to be like a person and be like, this kid only knows me as his old neighbor that wants to play b-ball. Like that's, that's really great that they uh, they had a cool connection like that. So I, I had to ask that story. But Brett Phillips, great vibe coordinator in mm-hmm. Colorado for the Rockies. Like that that would be a little. Would, he would he would rock the Crocs for sure. Oh, he'd be a real Croc rocker for sure. He would uh, be a Croc rocker. Who else is available? Uh, if you're a total space cadet, <laughs> bring bring back Ryan Altavia. Why not? <laughs> He's a free oh agent, God. Susie. Come on. That's crazy that, oh my gosh, I was shocked that Rymal Tapia even left the Rockies in the first place, but that would be a pretty hilarious turn of events. It would be. Uh, Former Rafael Ortega, uh, former Rocky at Rafael Ortega, he did Mm -hmm. sign a minor league deal with the Yankees. 
He's not available. Uh, and then on the trade market, uh, Oakland has been rumored to possibly be floating a guy like Seth Brown, who gives me Seth Smith type vibes. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, I don't know how much that moves the needle. We know Brian Reynolds is out there. Uh, news just came out that the Pirates and Brian Reynolds trying to negotiate a long term extension. That's the reason why he's wow. essentially been put on the trade market. Rather, he's not on the trade market. Brian Reynolds wants to be on the trade market. He said, trade me because. Uh, the number that was passed across the table to his agent was $50 million less than what he was anticipating. It's kind of a lot of money. That is, that's a lot of money. That's insulting. That's got to really hurt your feelings. Um, we should really, the Rockies should, should do what they can to give him that $50 million. We love giving away $50 million. <laughs> Susie Hunter, <laughs> at the Susie Hunter on Twitter, folks. Uh, <laughs> reach out, let her know. You might be getting a, an email from uh, an iPad uh, with that comment. But anyway, um, we also have Max Kepler uh, has been rumored to be floated out there by the Twins. Uh, I keep floating out Aaron Hicks's name. We'll see. I'm the only one saying it, but mm -hmm. uh, but I, but I see that as being a fit for the Yankees maybe to to reduce payroll uh, just a little bit. But let's get to the the starting pitching, right? Okay. Let's get to that. Rockies uh, might you know say no as far as them needing. Um, any more starting candidates, uh, as we said, Gomber and Feltner as maybe mm -hmm. your four and five. You like Lambert and Rawlison. You know, I don't know if they've got plans for a guy like Jeff Criswell, who they uh, acquired uh, at the winter meetings uh, mm -hmm. from the Tigers. He could be a possibility. Carl Kaufman spent uh, much of last year at AAA. So, yeah, they've got depth, but do they have proven depth? Mm -hmm. Three veteran guys are out there right now in Zach Greinke, Johnny Cueto, and Michael Waka. Thoughts? Any of those guys who all had really solid seasons last year in 2023, who mm -hmm. would? Uh, and, and again, I, I, I can't say that I, I think any one would be better than another. So you just maybe have to go off of the vibes. Who? who you know who, what? Who would you like in the clubhouse? I mean, I always, I always think personality first. But like Zach Greinke, what a, what an interesting dude to throw into the mix of all the other personalities um uh, johnny quino does he he does like a little shimmy when he pitches and i like an interesting pitching stance pitching movement so that would be fun too <laughs> and waka 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 again it is just wordplay galore for michael waka um, yes but i like so that of, honestly every single one of those guys would give us tremendous content and that's really so. what matters the most for us yeah for what we do for, for sure yeah no i would love a talk show uh Zach Greinke conversations with Charlie Blackman, those two guys in the same room, <laughs> having a conversation, one pitcher, one hitter. That is like, that should be a Spotify exclusive. Like if we could arrange that, I, I would listen to that more than I've currently listened to the Barack Obama, Bruce Springsteen podcast. Like I'm good on that. Did you know that was a thing? Maybe you didn't. I'm, maybe I'm I did not know you. that that was a thing. Um, I really only listen to sports podcasts. Um, but I I can't wrap my head around what you're telling me right now. Bruce Springsteen did play one of the Super Bowl halftime shows, so it's technically a sports podcast. And also, like, all of the, you know, Gen X, baby boomer sports writers love Bruce Springsteen. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> Give me one example. Um, <laughs> all of them. Yes. Um, so I feel like he's, I feel like Bruce Springsteen as a person is sports adjacent because of that. <laughs> Yeah, no, that, that that that's a good point. But the Granky Blackman conversation, like that ten part series, we'll see how that does. I don't think you need to throw any Joe Rogan money uh, at the two of them for that. Uh, it could be a little bit less than that, but I'm I'm listening. Like you, you've got my renewal for one more year when it comes uh, to that podcast. Granky Blackman, let's make it happen. Uh, this is as not I said, an ad for for Spotify. No, no. Greinke's 39. He's been around forever. Really? And he still looks like he's about 27, maybe 26 and a half. Yeah. Oh my God. I didn't realize he was 39. Oh, forget it. Oh my no. gosh. <laughs> 137 innings pitch. That's the other piece to it is that a veteran guy. Yeah. You want someone with a, you know, good ERA, good ERA plus like uh, mm -hmm. that's, that's a little more established than that. But you can see with the, the, uh, one year deal with the second year option on Jose Urania. You mm -hmm. go, eh, you know, have like a five ERA. How great is that? You need innings. You need innings right now with the state of where the bullpen is at. So, uh, Granky, he posts, he's going to provide those innings. Cueto uh, had a really solid season last year 158 innings pitch and two less starts. 
335 ERA, 118 ERA plus. And Michael Walker, uh, not quite as much, 23 starts, 127 innings, 332 ERA, pitching in that AL East, 127 ERA plus. That's pretty good. I like uh, Wade Miley and Zach Davies. Those are two guys Mm -hmm. uh, I think that kind of uh, would fit in well with the Rockies. Wade Miley, a little bit banged up last year, but he's a lefty that he's still got another like five, six years left in him. He's just, he's one of those guys that's going to be around for a while. Soft tossing lefty. Why not? Zach Davies is kind of a soft tossing righty. I, I, either of those guys again, adds uh, some real quality depth to the rotation. Yeah. Um, You know, those are better options than maybe some other options. Yeah. (laughs) Dylan Bundy, Michael Fulmer. Bundy was healthy last year, 140 innings pitched Mm -hmm. four, eight, nine ERA with Minnesota. You take that, I guess. Fulmer is more of a bounce back guy because he's been hurt, but those are some names. That's what, You've seven said names. Some names. You've said some names, Patrick. Yeah. What seven. about lefties? Uh, relievers. Yeah. Oh, uh, lefty relievers. Or, or starters. Or starters. Relievers. Yeah, Wade Miley uh, would be the would be the lone lefty there uh, from that bunch. So it's uh, they're they are very much a rare breed. Uh, and again, I, I like Wade Miley. I've. I mm-hmm. feel like since 2018, <laughs> I've been banging the drum like, "Hey, let's let's get Wade Miley into Coors Field." Like, I I feel like that that would but be. But no one fit. listens to you, Patrick. No one is no. doing what you're asking so nicely for. No. Last off season, I said bring in Kevin Kiermaier on a trade, trade Colton Welker, and you get Kevin Kiermaier. That'd have been a real match made in heaven. Last year, you would have had him for this year too, potentially. Last year, so. last year, obviously, we can't do that anymore. Negative, negative. Um, but if you're looking at lefty relief pitchers, as I said, yeah. I think Rawlson might be a guy in uh, in the bullpen. So that could give mm-hmm. you three to go along with Brent Suter uh, and Lucas Gilbreth. But the top tier guys, Zach Britton, Andrew Chafin, former D-back, Matt Moore, who was fantastic with the Rangers last year, and then mm-hmm. Will Smith, fresh off a World Series ring. The, the lefty reliever Will Smith, not the right-handed catching Will Smith. Too many Wills Smith. Too the, many of them. Or the right hand slapping Will Smith. All three different people. <laughs> different people all together. All of them with such a reputation. Yes. Uh, cheaper <laughs> options. Uh, I had TJ McFarland down. He just signed a minor league deal with the Mets. Brad Hand. Mm-hmm. Speaking of hands, uh, Alex Young, Justin Wilson. Those are mm-hmm. three kind of veteran guys. Uh, that you could bring in. I think all three of those guys would probably be deserving of a, of a big league deal, but can you wait around long enough? You could bring in a minor league guy. I don't think they would dare bring in a Roldis Chapman, right? I mean, that would be, I don't, I wouldn't like that for the Rockies at all. That's, that's not happening. I also no. don't think a reunion with Jake McGee would happen equally <laughs> as unlikely. <laughs> No, thank you. No, thank you. Yeah. Jake McGee is a name that like gives me so much anxiety. <laughs> yeah. The dude won a World Series ring with the Dodgers. I mean, come on. It's crazy to me. It just, it's not real. It's crazy. I, I thought that he would have like an all-star game appearance left in him because he, he had a couple good starts to a few seasons there. I think maybe, well, 2020, there was no all-star game. He was at the mm-hmm. Giants for a minute and looked really pretty solid. So I'm glad we didn't have to go down that uh, that memory lane. I think they'll bring in a couple minor league guys. Ty Block was that guy last year who ended mm-hmm. up making the 40-man. And uh, Stephen Brault. Bet on Stephen Brault. That's my that's my pick to click. I don't know what you're clicking or oh picking. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> but I'm going to pick that click or click that pick. Mm-hmm. Stephen Brault, uh, technically a Colorado guy, went to yeah. Regis University. So lefty. Minor Where is deal. he from originally? He might be in. He might be from Nevada. I'm oh, so a local guy. So a saying. local guy. <laughs> yeah. So technically, he is local. Yeah. He's a Colorado. Yeah, yeah. From the suburbs of Denver. In... Now he's actually from La Mesa, California. So, um, so I think that could be the, still the Denver metro area. Technically, Denver. Like if we expand it out, right? If you really pushed it, yeah. Of course. I mean, anything. If listen, if. Wyoming, if Wyoming is local to Seattle, then yeah, La Mesa, California can be local to Colorado. Ugh. What a world. What a world we live in. No um, one who does, no one on these sports shows knows geography except for me. I'm the only one. That's it. Wyoming, Colorado's hat, right? Is it pillbox? It's a, if Wyoming was a hat, what would it be? It'd be a pillbox hat, maybe. I guess a pillbox hat. Yeah. Pop hat. It would be it would be one of those Pittsburgh pirate hats 
uh, that yes. they were in the 70s. Yes, it well, that, would be. Yeah. There we go. I think that's like, is that a stove, stove pipe hat? Drawing a blank. That's it. It's I don't like know pop. what that kind of hat is called. I didn't win the hat naming bee. I won the, no, I didn't even win the geography bee. I came in second place, please. I need to Hatography. Laugh. The truth comes out. Second place geography winner, Susie Hunter. You need to change your Twitter profile immediately. You should also, in your Twitter profile, include how much you love pins and aces because their gear yes. is for everybody. And they've got all the, the, the Denver teams, all the colorways for that. Um, I imagine one of the big reasons why Susie's probably going to get into golf this year is pins and aces beer sleeve. They, they make listen, they make it look fun and they make it look good. Yeah. But yeah, the beer sleeve is what an incredible invention. Well, really actually here's the thing I, I've been meaning to ask you. I've had it in my notes yeah. for months. Uh, are you going the beer sleeve route or the seltzer sleeve route? You know, I'm more of a seltzer girl. Well, yeah, I had to ask. That's why I had to go there. Well, they've got you covered uh, on both of those fronts over at pinsandaces.com. When you use code DNVR, you're going to get 15% off your first order. You're also going to get free shipping. Look, they've got hats, uh, full golf bags, polos, you name it. Again, pinsandaces.com. And if you need tickets for an event, no matter where you're at, in the world game time tickets is the way to go 15 million folks are using it or have used it like myself and Susie uh, floor seats at a concert 50 yard line you name it rock pile yes you can sit that close rock pile. no you can get seats behind home plate uh, right now even at a really good price even even when so here's the thing you can wait until the start of the event and up to about an hour before the event you can get up to 60% off the, the value of the ticket, the face value. But there are also some events right now that are months away that some of those other ticket brokers, they already have them overpriced to what mm -hmm. game time tickets has right now. So even if you're just looking to take advantage of that, you absolutely should download the game time app and score the best seats to all your favorite events or in a way that would help us out. Hit the link in our description to see. Please, we, we, deserve, we deserve you clicking the link in the description. Absolutely. Um, I, I do want to get to our to our hats here, but um, Pete Rose, congratulations to him for making the first legal bet in the history of Ohio on Sunday. Pete Rose, what a uh, what a guy, what a what a guy with a lot going on. But yeah, of course, banned from MLB after gambling and now places a bet. He bet on the uh, Reds to win the World Series. That's right. I was going to try to uh, set you up with a pop Sue's to see, was it Bengals winning the Super Bowl? Maybe Liverpool winning the English Premier League. They are nicknamed the Reds. Uh, but yes, you, you did your homework. You know where where his heart and, and head is at. Pete Rose, you know what he is in a word? A card. He's a card, isn't he's he? He's a card. Yeah, he's he's maybe a full deck of cards. <laughs> he's, he's a couple of jokers short, shy of a, of a full deck, right? He's wild. It's funny because you know his the thing that he kind of uh, loves to put out there is this idea that well, he only bet on his team to win. And some people will say that too, like, hey, you only bet on his team to win. That's that's like a good thing. It wasn't nefarious. But anytime he did not bet on his team to win. What do you think that communicated to the bookies, right? Like there, there's that side too. It's not completely innocent of, well, he just did this one thing yeah. and it's entirely good. What is the, the, the opposite of that? What's the, the antithesis of that is, is very nefarious. So you know what, that is a really good point that I actually have not heard brought up, but that's, that's a fantastic point, Patrick. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Not only does it communicate that he might not have confidence in his team that day, or it could potentially communicate, um, you know what, I'm going to, tweak the lineup in, in just such a way where maybe I will sit, you know, Dave Parker, one of my, one of my best players uh, on the bench to start the game. And again, that that's a little bit of a tip. So yeah, uh, that's that um, Trevor Bauer. We haven't talked about Trevor Bauer, unfortunately, we haven't, and we haven't wanted to, and no. we sort of have to now and we'll, we'll get it out of our system. His suspension uh, was reduced from 324 games to 194 mm -hmm. games. Uh, thanks to an arbitration panel, uh, he's he's reinstated right now. And uh, from the point in which that uh, suspension was reduced, they had 14 days to decide if they will officially add him to the roster or release him. That 14th day is so that maybe, they have until Friday, right? Which is maybe fittingly January 6th. So what a day! What a day what for a all day. of us. 
What a day. Of course, that'll be a Susie show. It'll be me just like try to navigate how to talk about this without getting sued. Yeah, it's it's uh, it's obviously a difficult situation. I am. I'm just shocked that the Dodgers haven't done something already. Like, I don't know what they're waiting for. Yeah, I'm pretty surprised, too, because, yeah. I'm I'm very shocked that they haven't already made a decision and why they're using up the whole the whole time. This, yeah. whole, this whole 14 days. I I are they talking with teams to possibly trade him? I mean, look, he has he's a, more of an elite player than someone like Yasiel Puig, who I don't know that we'll see back in MLB. I, I don't know if we were necessarily going to see that regardless of his uh more recent, you know, gambling situation. But, mm-hmm. you know, he's he's a former Cy Young Award winner. So there are going to be teams where after a year or two and you know, they're, they're going to have forgotten about it. Someone's going to break. We will, we are unfortunately, I think going to see Trevor Bauer, uh, in, in major league baseball again, at some point, I don't know if it'll mm-hmm. be this year. Um, you know, he's, he's still going to get paid. He's set to make $35 million still from, uh, uh, from, from the Dodgers. So it's not mm-hmm. like they're, they're going to save anything by, uh, by getting rid of him. Uh, I think that's one of the reasons why they've been so quiet because that $35 million, uh, is, is a lot to, to play with, even with some of the free agents that are still left. Uh, mm-hmm. They want us to get under the luxury tax threshold so they can maybe make a play on Shohei Otani next off season. Um, there there's been some uh, rumors that there are some players in the clubhouse that want to see him back that, you know, if, if you want to win a world series and you really want to turn the other cheek, you're going to want him back. And there, there have been some Dodgers who behind the scenes have commented that um, they, they would, would like to see him back, which Again, a little surprise. Has right ha, have this has have these comments been public from people? Has anyone publicly said, "Oh, I want this teammate of mine, Trevor Bauer, to be back on my team"? Oh no, and I, I don't think we are yeah. going to see that for sure. <laughs> one, one, uh, I had I had this on our outline, and then late last night, an article from the LA Times was published. Uh, they asked their readers, their subscribers. Oh, I saw, I, should, I saw this. Yeah. yeah. What should the Dodgers do? Forty-eight point eight percent. It was so it was close. It was right down the line. But forty-eight point eight percent said release him, which means a majority of their public, of Dodgers fans or of LA sports fans, fifty-one point two percent thought they should actually keep him. I am very surprised by that. I'm I shouldn't be, maybe, but I am. I'm I'm surprised. I'm surprised. Um, uh, I know that he was cleared legally of the things that um, you know, have gone down, but. I still find consensual or not. I still find the things that he is interested in to be very disturbing. Yeah. And like, I'm very uncomfortable by them. It still feels violent to me, even consensually. So I don't know. I, I, um, it gives me literal nausea right now talking about this. Yeah. Yeah. Guy, he's, he's not guilty. Doesn't mean he's necessarily innocent or did nothing wrong. Just they could not convict him. Like that's yes. what not guilty means. So uh, hopefully we get a, a, a resolution on this. Uh, we'll we'll kind of wait and see. But uh, let's 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 talk about something a little bit more positive. Uh, yeah, gigantic hats. Uh, you've oh. you've seen some of this, or you you don't know? You, you haven't even seen. I, only I like- have no idea what you're talking about. Um, I've been pretty checked out. Um, especially like all of New Year's weekend, like totally checked out from news from the sports world. Um, I so I genuinely have no idea what you're talking about, Patrick. Uh, super producer Tiffany, can we see the Brian Robinson photo? So this was the first guy that put on blast. I bet you you've seen this, Brian Robinson. He's got the Washington yeah. Commanders cap on, wearing it forward. He wore it, you know, uh, after the game, showered, put his put his uh, civvies on, and uh, was rocking the hats. Hey, let me know if you need one. And this was the guy who started the craze. There's somebody on the Packers who did it too. Uh, mm-hmm. But the, but the name of this company is Noggin Boss. They were actually on Shark Tank earlier this year, and they huh. struck a deal with with Damon John. And I think. I think uh, Mark Cuban actually ended up getting in on the deal as well. Uh, their orders have gone through the roof. Oh they've, my gosh! They've made some stuff. They don't have any official licenses yet, but they have had. Uh, they've made some special orders for the Dallas Mavericks and Dallas Stars, Arizona mm-hmm. Cardinals, New Jersey Devils, New, New oh York Islanders, my gosh. San Jose Sharks. But no baseball caps. No MLB teams have but yet these, to. But these yet. are baseball caps. Why do no MLB teams have these yet? These are literally caps for baseball. 
I have a feeling these two gentlemen, these are uh, these are the owners of Noggin Boss. I I think they they will be making a lot. They're probably trying to fulfill orders right now for spring training because this is a just a great tchotchke. It's it's a it's a pretty big tchotchke, but I it's mean, a great item to buy as a fan at the stadium. I was gonna say this is like right up there with like this goes with the foam finger. This goes with you know the rally chains, those big chains. So I'm like okay. These accessories are so fun. When I saw these pictures, uh, like, you know, in the system before our show, I thought they were Photoshopped. Like, so no. Like, there's this is Damon not John uh, rocking the Yankees cap. Like, it, not real. No. It, it looks like something out of, uh, I forget what video it was where Ludacris was, you know, he had gigantic forearms and everything was kind of blown up. Oh, my um, gosh. But. Fittingly, Ludacris uh, has worn one of the, the noggins. So they're they're trying to get it out there into the hip hop world. It's now these things. There's Ludacris. <laughs> like it actually doesn't look that big on his head. I don't know why. Because his hair's he's got, big. Yeah, he's got the big. afro, so it actually feels actually looks it looks more normal, natural on him for sure. Um, but my question, I am I'm still processing this. <laughs> yeah, uh, it's it's a lot. It's a lot to take in. It's a lot. This gigantic hat. It looks better forward than backwards. I'll say that. Definitely. Yeah. Well, because backwards, I don't really know if you could like really grasp the context of what you're looking at. Yeah. I don't like the sun's cap just because the the underneath part is also purple and the brim is gray. It just mm -hmm. looks better if it's all like one solid color. How much do you think these are? How much do you think one of these caps right now are from Noggin Boss? If you I'm going to say... Um, okay. So for regular hat, honestly, regular baseball caps are like $40. I'm going to say those are $59.99. I loved your logic. Yes. Obviously it would have to be more than a regular one. They are $75 at base, like for a plain one. And then I, you probably have to pay more for that. So I don't, I mean, mm -hmm. if get again, if you're getting a, a mass order, you know, at Coors Field, uh, and you're getting Rockies ones, maybe the fans would have to pay $79.99. That's not a, it's not a foam finger. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, no, that is, that's much more of an investment than a foam finger. That's not something you're going to buy for the kids. Like the, the kids are going to see that at the store and be like, uh -huh. oh my gosh, mom, dad, please buy me one. They're going to be like, son, it's $80. We cannot do that because you will lose it. They'll have to get a kid version of it, like a kid friendly one mm -hmm. that's smaller, that is like 50 bucks possibly, but still looks gigantic on their head. The question to you is, mm -hmm. do we see one of these gigantic caps somewhere at Coors Field follow up? Will they sell one at one of the dugout stores? Ooh, um, I don't know about this season. I feel like we will see one. I feel like it won't be a Rockies one. I feel like someone will wear like that Suns one or something because people are always wearing stuff that is not baseball and not the Rockies to Coors Field. So I feel like we will see one, but it won't be a Rockies one. I, I agree with you. Uh, we'll, we'll, it, there'll be one out there in the wild, but I, mm -hmm. you're, I, I don't know that there's enough time for them to to place their order uh, to to fill up the dugout store. There, there are going to be some teams that that figure it out and maybe you know have to pay for you know, either rush shipping or like, please have your people work, you know, overnight. We'll, we'll, we'll pay double the price, whatever it is, they'll figure <laughs> it out. I just don't know if the Rockies will be one of those teams. I feel like opening day, we're going to see one of the commander ones. <laughs> just that exact one. It's just going to be passed from player to player to player. Oh, I feel like a fan will show up. There's going to be a person from DC wearing a commander's giant hat. It's it's an item right now because again it's still so rare. I think maybe somebody on the Packers actually wore one uh, over the last week or two. Mm -hmm. So it's still like really rare that if you were to have one that was branded in any way and put it up on eBay, mm -hmm. I think I feel like people would pay close to two hundred bucks for one right now. Like if there was a Rockies one, there's there are a couple of fans out there that I think that would go. I mean, I'm gonna have one of one almost like there's not very many of them. Yeah, it's got some cachet to it. If you have uh, a noggin boss gigantic Rockies cap folks in the comments do let us know how much would you spend on one of these giant noggin hats right now <laughs> and then let how much know. would you pay for a DNVR one and then how much would you pay for a knockoff DNVR one <laughs> from a rival company I didn't want to go back there but I did I'm it's so, just so funny it's so it's funny. funny um I hope that DNVR gets some um I hope our Fantastic salespeople are watching this. <laughs> Cease and desist. Uh, we'll see. I don't know. Yeah. 
sincerest form of flattery. Yeah. Yes. No, if anything, we're not getting the cease and desist. They uh, need to be getting the cease and desist. This is ridiculous. <laughs> yes. No, I, I I don't think we what would we either of us get a cease and desist order for? You you but might this, get a restraining this, order from Dinger this season, but that's no, not a cease and desist. If that's anything, it's the other way around because Dinger sneaks oh. up on me. I don't you sneak like up it. on Dinger. But you guys, you guys have that. That's part of your relationship, though. So it's I think a, it's you know the whole cat and mouse thing. You know, it's just <laughs> it's some schoolyard stuff. He's throwing rocks at you, but mm -hmm. it's really because he's got a crush. Feeling is a little mutual. So yeah, I don't. I think you'll be okay. I think I'll be okay. Well, I think we're getting sued after this show, no matter what. Someone, oh, okay. someone sued this show for real <laughs> today. <laughs> exactly. So yes, uh, big fan Rachel Luba, big fan. So not again. Susie Hunter is where you want to hit up, um, or on Twitter. The main account is at dnvr underscore rockies. At Patrick D Lyons is where I'm at on Twitter. You can't find me anywhere on social media. I don't even exist. <laughs> um, we've lost all the momentum for this entire week, but <laughs> Susie, we still have two more shows that we have to do, uh, and we mm -hmm. will do it on time at 11 a.m. on Thursday. And you've got a show on Friday back in studio, I believe, mm -hmm. at 5 p.m. It's going to we'll be, be great. So, hey, you know what they say about momentum? What do they say? It's only as good as our next two shows. So we'll see you on the DNVR Sports Channel on YouTube.